Mr. Speaker, today I rise to honor and thank the Patriot Guard Riders who live on Long Island and all across our country. The Patriot Guard Riders, a nonprofit organization, consists of a diverse group of motorcycle enthusiasts and patriots who share a deep appreciation and commitment to honoring our U.S. service members, veterans, and their families. Rooted in their unwavering patriotism and respect for our nation's military men and women, the Patriot Guard Riders go above and beyond daily to ensure everyone, from our nation's veterans to our community's first responders and their families, receive the appreciation they deserve. When a veteran arrives at Calverton National Cemetery for burial in my district, the Patriot Guard Riders are there. On Veterans Day, Memorial Day, July 4th and 9-11 events, the Patriot Guard Riders are there. When our community's veterans are returning from their honor flight trips to Washington, D.C., our Patriot Guard Riders are there. No matter rain or shine or snow, whether it's freezing cold or scorching hot, the Patriot Guard Riders are there. Last month, our nation lost seven airmen in the line of duty, four of whom are from the 106th Rescue Wing on Long Island. As their families gathered at Kabreski Air National Guard Base to receive their sons, brothers, husbands, and our heroes, several dozen Patriot Guard Riders gathered to escort these fallen airmen from the base. It is in these moments, the most difficult moments in the lives of the families of these fallen airmen, when the Patriot Guard Riders as detailed in their motto, stand for those who stood for us. The family members of these fallen service members may not know the names of these Patriot Guard Riders, but recognition is not what drives them. As these fallen airmen were escorted from the base, a sea of American flags rose up to flank their caskets. As their families prepared to say their final goodbyes in unquestionable, Unwavering sense of patriotism swelled, carried on the backs of the Patriot Guard Riders' bikes. They have especially made our nation's heroes their priorities when others have neglected to show their appreciation. Time after time, when a, a veteran of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, has been buried without family or friends, you could count on the Patriot Guard Riders to have been there. We need more Pete Jepsons in our world, who is the senior ride captain for all of Suffolk County. There's Mary Ann, L.W., Wayne, John, Eugene, Susan, Nancy, Mark, Dennis, Richard, Warren, Karen, and so many others who would drop everything at a moment's notice to stand for those who stood for us. The Patriot Guard Riders are made up of hundreds of thousands of everyday people all across America. With the inspiration that consumes us whenever we see them in action, we should all aspire to the ideals and dedication each and every one of them embody. To our Patriot Guard Riders, thank you for your service to our great country.
One Army veteran, one Navy veteran, and three Air Force veterans, all left unclaimed by loved ones in Amarillo. We started out with 92 names of the homeless and indigent cremains that were in the vaults in the, that were stored in the county courthouses. And uh, so I knew that there were possibly a few veterans among those. After discovering several were veterans, the Missing in America project worked to find a way to make sure they were properly buried. Had no idea that we were going to get this kind of outpouring of support and, uh, and love and appreciation of our veterans, uh, even those that we don't even know. The remains of all five were brought to San Antonio from Amarillo yesterday, escorted by the Texas Patriot Guard. And again today, the Veterans Organization took them on their final ride to Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery. We get to give them a proper burial with a name. You know, I'm sure we, there is no face to it, but there is a name and, and, and they'll live forever in our hearts. Prison! The late servicemen served in the Cold War, Korean War, and Vietnam War periods. Bob Johnson, who also served in Vietnam, says it's sad to know they never received a proper welcome home. He feels honored to see them get that final respect today. Knowing that uh, I'm giving them something that they probably never had, that's why whenever I see a Vietnam veteran, I always say, welcome home because uh, they didn't hear that very much. The Missing in America project has buried more than 3,000 remains of U.S. military veterans. It's proud project giving our heroes a final goodbye. Amanda Weber, News 4, San Antonio. Steve, thank you. New tonight at 10, the remains of five Panhandle veterans are in San Antonio tonight. This after nearly a year of research in identifying the forgotten heroes. These veterans have been left unclaimed in Potter, Randall, and surrounding counties, but now the Missing in America Project and Patriot Guard writers are honoring them and laying them to rest. ABC 7's Case Wilbanks reports. For a final time, these five Texas veterans are on a journey home, and that journey started with a question. Can we go and, uh, and look through the records? And as a result, we found, we found these veterans. A collaboration between A to D Mortuary, Potter, Randall, and surrounding counties put these unclaimed veterans of Vietnam and Korea on a Missing in America Project mission. It means a great deal to me. Uh, and uh, to see our community come together like this, people from all over the state have come to, to honor these veterans. Some of those people are the Texas Patriot Guard riders who volunteer to transport the remains to Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery in San Antonio. Air Force veteran Hank Bettis says it's a heartwarming experience. It's near and dear to me that these gentlemen that, and women that are serving and, and give the ultimate sacrifice, uh, you know, it's the least we can do to bring them home. At the guard stop in Lubbock, area veterans also joined in to say one last thank you to their comrades. They were lonely for a long time. But now they it home. Now whether it's here at this gas station in Sweetwater or anywhere along the route, the Patriot Guard says the show of support along the way is breathtaking. It really rings true to the fact that we as Americans really stand for our military and enjoy the freedoms and thank them for the freedoms that they have given their life to preserve. Even buses of children honoring those who fought for them before they were even born. It just proves. Patriotism in this country is not dead by a long shot. I'm sorry. Also emotional for Dana Hasselgrove as he's charged with transporting one of the veterans. Take a feather a fellow brother that served with me in Vietnam to his final rest. It's just, uh, it's an honor beyond belief. And with a handoff ceremony in Sweetwater, these veterans continue their way until the mission is complete. These soldiers deserve back from them the proper treatment, the care, the medical care, uh, you know, the proper rendering of honors for them when they, when they are now being laid to rest.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What a, what a pleasure to see all these wonderful people here today. It's such an honor to be among this group of people. I look out and I see the, the, the Patriot Guards standing there who I've seen at many funerals, standing there with their flags. I see wonderful great service members that came here today that are standing here to, to be honored today that they so rightfully deserve. I see the, the senators and representatives that helped make this thing a reality. And I see a group that's very near and dear to my heart, the donors. And I'm not sure if I'm supposed to start now because it says I'm supposed to start at 10.05 because we're going to have an event scheduled that's going to shake your boots, I'm telling you. It's going to be an event when you see it happen. And this monument is only a small token of our state's appreciation to what these young men and women and their families have gone through on our behalf. And one of the things that we decided to do when we came up with this monument is we wanted to make sure that the monument not only gave recognition to the sacrifice of the service members, but also to the sacrifice that the families made. And so as you'll notice in the, in the monument, we have a wife who doesn't want to let go of that husband who's going off to war. But she knows she's going to have to let go and they're going to go off to war and they're going to be separated for quite a while. And they're looking at each other with love, knowing I'm not going to see you for a year and please come back. We see the child there looking at dad, saying, I don't quite understand what's going on. I'm pretty young, but I don't think I like what's going on. And I'm going to miss you, dad, and please come back to me. A lot of people don't realize, but what a lot of our service members would have a cardboard cutout of their image left at home and the kids would carry that cardboard image around the house with them. And a lot of the kids are showing the signs of the stress that they have because mama or daddy wasn't there. It's just unre unremarkable what we put these family members through. I mean, it's terrible enough that we put the service members through it, but the poor families and these young children, what they have gone through is just unbelievable, the pain and suffering that they had. So at this time, we would like to present to you a small token of our state's appreciation to these wonderful men and women and their families for their service. The price of liberty. Thank you. There were 600 balloons that we just released, one for each of those young men and women that gave the ultimate sacrifice for us on our behalf. Thank you. Let's go out here and grab the flag and we'll just go ahead and get ready for the buses to arrive.
Ireland. Well, they risked their lives overseas to help protect ours back at home. And tonight, a group of wounded, active, and military veterans were given the best seats in the house at the Dallas Mavericks game. Our Jeff Paul, live in Victory Park right now to explain. Well, yeah, Kaylee, more than 100 wounded warriors were flown in from Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio, put on these buses, and were given the star treatment as they entered the AAC tonight. Tonight was all about honoring these brave men and women who sacrificed a piece of themselves and are still paying those costs. Right on the floor, I can't believe it. None of them asked for any of this. They are some of the most humble people on earth. But for more than 100 wounded service members, tonight was theirs. It's overwhelming is what it really is because I don't think I feel like I've done anything. Amy Esterman is just one of the many who were honored at the Dallas Mavericks game tonight. Even former President George W. Bush was there. Things like this have really uh, helped our spirits and helped us kind of get through a time that would otherwise be very dark. After suffering an abdominal injury as an Army intelligence officer in Afghanistan, doctors would then discover she had a brain tumor. She soon realized she was not alone in her fight outside the battlefield. We have this bond where we can all instantly share with each other what's wrong with us. Like, oh, what are you in for? Some of their injuries are visible, others are not. But the pain they've endured is all for the same reason, our freedoms. It, it really struck me uh, some of the agony that they were going through for our country. Neil Hawks is a longtime season ticket holder. 13 years ago, when he decided to give up his tickets to a few injured military members, other ticket holders caught on. And now once a year, every single courtside seat is for a soldier. They give us a reason to get out of our barracks, to go and get your life back. A small gesture for their immense sacrifice. At the American Airlines Center, I'm Jeff Paul, CBS 11 News. Selma, 1518, we're going to get off. We're a little stretch, we can half mile. Then we're going to get right back on 35.
Campitor and my stepfather is buried here at Fort Sam. Uh, my husband's retired Air Force and uh, we found out about this a couple months ago and are thrilled to be part of it. It's uh, amazing what's... Sorry about the promotional. <laughs> Sorry. I love our veterans and grateful that this is happening for them. My name is Star Nance and this is my daughter Melissa Elizondo. But this is my third year uh, for hauling down here at Fort Sam Houston and I'm a military brat. So I just feel like I need to honor the sacrifices that our men and women have made for us. And this is one small way that I can do that. Okay, this soldier was one of our volunteers in 2015. And um, I didn't take the picture, a friend of mine took it. And she watched him and every time that he placed a wreath, he would salute and he would read the information on the headstone and then he would kneel down and pray. And on this particular one, she said he was down for quite a while. When she went and looked after he got up and left, the headstone had three names on it. And she researched it and there was a father, his wife, and the son and the father had just got back from a deployment for two years in Afghanistan and they were killed in a car wreck two weeks after he got home. So I told my graphics guy, he has to be on my truck because this is what it's all about. My name's Bill White from Southeast Bear County. And it's been about my seventh or eighth year being out here with Reese Across America. And it's a real joy to see all these people out here. Been times in the past there's only been about 10 to 20 of us out here unloading these trucks and now we've got hundreds of people coming out here especially the young people that come out here you know that, that want to honor these things and uh, hopefully we'll have thousands of people out here tomorrow and uh, help us with the celebration of the actual night of the race. Thank you very, very much for showing up at this ungodly hour. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.